Alright bro, so the BET Awards are back for another dreadful year, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't even realize this was going on. I kinda stopped watching after I turned 15, and as times change and progress, I think the only thing from my youth that hasn't either died out or changed itself is BET as a whole. So to see it still going strong even after all of their decent non-Tyler Perry shows leaving, and 106 in part going off a long time ago, I guess you could say it still puts a small smile on my nostalgia filled face. Or so I thought. So you're probably or probably not wondering why I even bothered to watch the BET Awards if I felt so negligent about it in the first place. And to that, I have two reasons. One, Tyler the Creator is performing and I don't think I've ever seen him on BET at all, so I would say this is both a staple for him and myself. Two, Taraji P. Henson was the host. D don't ask why that matters. Uh, and three, it's been a lot of veteran and new talent to arise throughout the past year, so I was actually kind of intrigued to see some of these performances from artists such as Lil Durk, Roddy Rich, Lil Nas X, and more. And when watching some of these performances, I honestly can't tell if I like them or not. An example would be at the very beginning with gospel artist Kirk Franklin opening up the show with Lil Baby, and they did a pretty good job. If you remember from a previous video I did, I talked about the song that they collaborated on, and I actually liked it and I thought that both the choir and Little Baby complimented each other well, with Kirk Franklin doing his usual DJ Khaled impression. And when watching the performance, I feel the exact same way. It was a good way to slowly bring energy into the show. But as for the following performance from Migos, I was about this close to turning off my TV until I realized I have a video to make. The majority of the performances was boring, with the trio appearing with gas masks on their face and fire all around the place like they just walked out of the south side of Chicago. They stood around the same spot while Cardi B had to come out the cut with another goddamn baby, dancing like there's no tomorrow. Kinda makes me wonder if this performance or Culture 3 was worse to be honest. But as stated before, I only watched the show for one performance, Teller the Creator. And while that was one of the more creative performances from this show, God damn was it underwhelming. And it's not that it was bad or anything, it just felt much shorter than the other artists performances. With the whole wind blowing and popping up out of a car, I thought he'd really be able to maybe toss more than one song in there to really get people going. Especially for his first time being on BET. But as for the other performances, they were pretty nice for a small venue. Her came out to perform with a fucking sick ass guitar solo, Megan Thee Stallion had a whole twerk session, and the baby did something. I mean, I don't know what the hell he had going on, but there was a baby, people dunking a basketball, him flying in the air, kinda reminds me of his usual music videos. But overall, after checking back into the BET Awards after so long, I can gladly say that I will never check back into them again. And no, it's not because Tyler only performed for like one goddamn millisecond, it's just because everything felt weak and watered down nowadays in comparison to the years before, this time due to COVID. Like Drake's wonderful performance from the 2010 awards or when Salt and Pepper reunited to perform some classics. But how do you guys feel about everything? Go ahead and tell me your opinions down below while you're liking and subscribing to the channel. Make sure to follow my IG and Twitter, and if you like the illustrations used in this video, make sure to follow the artist because she's really dope. And I'll see you later. Peace.